podcast where we discuss and review the unusual, offbeat, and obscure. I'm Chris Schultz. I'm Aaron Christian. And uh, here we are once again. Yes, once again. So what's shaking, Aaron? Um, my behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing new. Nothing new. Okay. Um, not not probably not since last week. We haven't recorded last week's episode yet, but yeah. Um, probably not much different. Yeah, a lot of exciting things going on in the background, building up. But mm, there's currently a thunderstorm on its way, from what I understand. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping <laughs> it's cold out and it's raining, which is not a recipe for thunder. But uh, I'm, no, I'm but, keeping. I'm well, mindful. No, that wasn't it. I thought there was. I thought I heard thunder. Oh, it would be. I might have to. If we do get some, I might pop the door open because it would be kind of fun to get that um, on our audio. But. Mm-hmm. Well, the music portion of this episode is is not from today so <laughs> no. so it, the continuity doesn't really make a lot of sense but we'll we'll go with it yeah we um, exist outside of time we do well i i think i'm hearing things i'm getting excited yeah, maybe we got a storm maybe we do if not i'll just start playing thunder on my laptop <laughs> <laughs> nice well uh, in the meantime i brought for us some beverage which we haven't done Ooh. Uh, maybe we did it last week who knows uh, uh yeah spit was the last <laughs> Spit's the last thing I remember doing. Yeah. Um, but we might have done something else. I, I can't remember. Uh, is that a twist? Oh, no. Castle Island was the last thing we did. Right. Is that a twist off or do I get it? It's a twist off. Oh, okay. Cause they it actually... says twist off on the cap, so. Okay. I get it. I think it's a twist off. Um, do you want to do a description while I go off mic to break that open? Yeah, of that, it's um, it's maple sap that's seltzerized, pretty much. Um, I can't, I, I don't have any information about it. I was in New Hampshire and um, it started spilling all over Chris, and that's hilarious. I was in New Hampshire and there's this uh, store up there called the Local Grocer, which has a bunch of like health stuff, and they had that on there, and um, on there in there in their store. So we got it. I was like, that's pretty esoteric. You know, where are you gonna get that? Were they billing it as like a health? Yeah. Um, okay, uh, I have to confess, I didn't buy it. It was given to me, um, so I don't know. Dude, that should be a bartender. Yeah, it looks. Now it's funny because it looks like water, um, like or maybe seltzer water is a better example. Um, but it says no water on the label. There's no water in that at all. No. Thank you. So. So this is a. It smells like a tree, if you ask me. The original sparkling sugar maple juice from Vermont Sweetwater Bottling Company. An all-natural product that starts when winter draws to an end and the days become warm and sunny. The mountain snows are naturally filtered through the roots of the sugar maple. The roots send forth their stored nutrients up into the crown of the tree where small amounts are tapped off to create this refreshing, light sparkling drink with a hint of maple sweetness. This smells amazing. Ooh, I do like the smell. All right, well, um, it, it just—I feel like I'm about to drink syrup. Mm. That's that's the. Wow, this is great. I'm done with that. I might have to get some more if this is tastes as I hope it does. Well, here's to uh, thunderstorms and maple syrup. Yes. Sweetness. That is interesting. Hmm. <laughs> that was so much less climactic. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. Do, do, the, do you taste that? Yeah. It's not as sweet as no. I would have imagined it. It's got that seltzer water flavor to it. Mm. The smell's a lot stronger than the taste, for sure. I like that it's not like thick and syrupy like so like soda. Yeah, I wish it was a little sweeter. Yeah, I do too. But um, the aftertaste is nice. Mm. <laughs> it's got a nice um, mouth feel. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Vermont bottling bros maybe make it a little sweeter. Mm. Well, I remember one time I went to uh, a sugar shack. And I was obsessed with, I had read a book when I was a kid about, you know, colonial times, and they made candy 
by pouring like hot maple syrup into the snow and it hardened into a candy hmm. and they made it for us and i was psyched because it was like a childhood dream coming true that i got this thing that i read about in the book but i remember that they had dixie cups with the the maple syrup in different stages mm -hmm. and the first one was clear sweet water it tasted like maple syrup except it was the consistency of water and it was clear right and then it got progressively thicker um, as they refined it so when i was in middle school outside the middle school we have a maple tree out there and we hooked up a little hose to it and or whatever the thing is and we we made maple syrup so mm -hmm. for school we had pancakes for like one half day or something and they served us the homemade maple syrup we made outside the school oh that's which cool. was cool so i don't know yeah um uh, if you're in the white green mountains whatever <laughs> the mountainous areas of mountains. the northeast and you stumble across it give it a shot yeah um, it's definitely not bad no it's not hard so, uh, yeah okay before we go any further i want to take a minute to talk about the awesome folks at anchor if you haven't heard about anchor it's the easiest way in fact it's the way that we make a podcast let me explain it's free there are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast. Best part, no minimum listenership. Ooh. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. It's so cool. I We just we found the service we started using it we're making podcasts yeah making podcasts making money having a good time so listen you want to get you out there you want to be heard download the free anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started thank you so i was thinking it might be helpful when we review an album uh on occasions that we can to to muse about something at least tangent gently related to the album I think it's a good idea. So two things that stick with you your entire life. Your first girlfriend and your first car. Yeah, and we talked about the first one already. We did. And since this album is uh, Hobo Johnson's 94 Corolla, yeah. what better subject to muse about than cars? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I... When I heard that this... Not heard. Like, when I saw that this album was a thing, um, 94 Corolla... Um, it kind of resonated with me because all of the cars that I've owned have been Toyotas. Um, Interesting. Two Camrys and a Solora. So I, I was just like, yeah, yeah. So um, hmm. that's a point I wanted to mention about that. Thinking back, uh, I currently have a Toyota and I believe, nope, that's not true. I was going to say that was the first foreign car I bought, but my first pickup truck was in a Suzu. My first car, which I remember very fondly, was an 83 Chevy Impala. It was a Maine State Police car with a 354 barrel under the hood. And that car uh, was a money pit. But I had such a love for it, and it was uh, a powerful girl. <laughs> she had... She had a stallion for a heart underneath that hood, and that car yeah. could move. I once did a buck forty through the parking lot at the South Shore Plaza. <laughs> uh, going through there, which was uh, not something I would uh, recommend doing, or nor would I replicate. I, I have like the fastest I've gone on the highway is ninety five, and then I start to feel uncomfortable because I don't know how much control I have at ninety five miles per hour. No, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a little. 140 it was pants shitting um like you just knew if you sneezed while your hand was on the wheel you were gonna like barrel roll that yeah. car yeah so my first car i i missed my first car because it was a convertible and like i don't care how old you are being able to go down to like the beach with the top down mm. um you know you might look stupid but it's a nice time <laughs> yeah um so i miss i miss that about it but i mean i i think i bought it for 2000 and the and i sold it for 600 bucks because the the head gasket almost blew on it <laughs> it was leaking coolant and i didn't even know it didn't even overheat wow. it was awful yeah if you get anything for your your car when you sell it i feel like you've made out especially your first time around yeah yeah and 
And th- what, so here's the sad part, right? I, I sold that car because I got a new car. It was a, it was a red um, 2003 Toyota Camry. And that car was great. It was owned by a woman that, like, drove it to church and back. And, um, you know, that was it. Yeah. Um, which is very well taken care of. And, of course, I get T-boned in an intersection. And the car is destroyed and totaled. So um, I lose, like, the best car I'd ever had yeah. through that. Luckily, though, there were nice rubber mats in there. And I happened to buy a 2002 Camry afterwards, which is what I have now. And I can stick those mats into it so I have the carpet ones in the trunk and the nice nice rubber ones I got from this old lady nice. so it kind of worked out because they just scrapped that car anyway I left all my trash in it because you know what I didn't care yeah the heck with it yeah I've had uh, I was going to try to to come up with a count of how many cars I've had because I've had a lot um, and there was only a few that I hated most of them I was I had affection for I, just, I mean, I only know you having two cars, and the first one that you had creeped me out, mainly because of the Buddha you had on the dash. <laughs> my, my. Um, and, like, I, it, it's just when you're, when you're what was I, probably 13 years old, like, I, there's a little Boy Scout um, getting into the Scoutmaster's car to go to wherever we were going, and there's Buddha on the dash. Like, I don't know how to take that, <laughs> you know? And, and it's not a judgment thing. I just, like, is it? Yeah, you know? it was unusual. <laughs> It was unusual. That was my uh, champagne a minivan, my Dodge mini Dodge Caravan. Grand, was it a Grand? No, I don't think it was a Grand Caravan. It was just a Caravan. I actually, you know, what's funny is <clears throat> that's supposed to be one of the signs of becoming middle aged and suburbanized when you get the minivan. I actually really liked the minivan. It mm. was good to drive. Uh, it was comfortable. If you took all the seats out in the back, you basically had a, a pickup that was enclosed. Yeah. And you could get. Like eight people in it, and I very seldomly, other than when we were doing scouting trips, had eight people. And like I, the kids didn't. That's one of the reasons I got rid of it, was because I wasn't driving the kids around. So right. when I needed to tow a trailer, I figured it was time to upgrade to a truck. Um, prior to that minivan, I had a a Saturn, a four door Saturn, which was a standard, and I loved driving a standard, except I commuted from Quincy to and then Abington um, to Boston every day right. and I actually wore a hole in my left shoe from standing on the clutch so mm. much because the traffic never moved so it really wasn't worthwhile having a stick you know I don't understand I understand how a stick works but I don't know how to drive stick because you know no, there's really no manual cars nowadays except for maybe high end ones that or I mean an old car or like high end ones that like have to be driven that way but yeah. the odds of me owning a manual in, in the future are not I'll, I'll have to say I didn't learn to drive on a, a stick in fact um, Carrie and I were living in Boston and we bought a uh, Dodge Omni an old Dodge Omni off of someone and it was a stick and I learned to drive the stick on that car mm-hmm. blew out the clutch which happens if you're learning to drive on it yeah um but I really liked it. It gives you a lot of freedom, and I think it's one of those things that once you try it, like if you learn to drive a stick, you'll like it a lot more. Mm-hmm. I never got into downshifting. I would just pop it into neutral and brake, uh, which wears out your brakes faster, but I just never got the handle of downshifting. Um, yeah, I, I did have a friend of mine. He actually lives over here from you, um, but he um, his dad had a 91 Toyota. Um, some, it was a pickup of sorts. I don't know exactly what car it was, but it was a 91 um, up until like 2015, so yeah. I'm like that's like that's like 25 years old. Yeah, Toyota's um, a good car. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, probably 200,000 miles on the thing, but it was a manual, mm-hmm. and um, used to drive me up the street. And I and I could never understand why the car was shifting until I figured out it was a manual. Yeah, because uh, I was like 13. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what cars do. I I know what my mom does. She gets groceries. Almost all the bosses' trucks are uh, manuals. Are they? Yeah, huh. <clears throat> the big ones. Um, you know, so when we're talking about cars, I just wanted to ask a question. So, and you've asked me this question before: Why in the movie cars do mm-hmm. they have doors? <laughs> I know, right? It's some. I, I have heard a theory advanced that it's a post-apocalyptic world, like post-humans. There were humans at some point. Yeah. So I, um, I've seen this picture. I've shown you it before, um, but and I, I don't know if we've talked about this on here before. We might have, but I'm just going to bring it up because it's applicable. But it's basically a human is like controlling the inside of the car so when you look inside the car like you know the eyes are like expanded under the windshield like instead of gas that goes into the gas it's like food 
So they're organic inside. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, not like it's it's like an act. It's like a human you like you or me, but yeah. like our body parts and and functions are are basically the way that a car functions. It just like turns it into something we can use. You know what I mean? Sort of like a turtle, maybe. Mm-hmm. Like the car is your shell. Kind of, but it's like you're you can. There's a microphone for you to speak out of the car as the horn, yeah. or like to to breathe. There's like a it's like a vent hole or something like that or like the the exhaust pipes where you poop out of and stuff like that <laughs> i my point is, is like the functions of a car like it's still functions you still need an oil you still need oil and stuff like that yeah um but like it it like turns into food okay it's weird i i'll have to show you the picture again at some point there's a description on it yeah that's like it but if you ever if you ever get the chance to look up online why do the cars in the movie cars have doors <laughs> Um, an article should come up with this photograph, oh, and you might learn a lot about it. It reminds me, actually, of um, a story one of our scouts was talking about with uh, Thomas the Tank Engine <laughs> actually being a uh, Sir Tottenham Hatt's child that died and turned back into, like, this cyborg train thing. What, what was it? Shed? Uh, um, Shed 17? Shed 17. Yeah. I, it, which, which uh, if anyone wants to go down that rabbit hole, apparently that's a creepy pasta. I, I will say actually I like it's it's a mock it's a mock interview and it was like very entertaining to watch I will say because <laughs> when he told the story like it was a little drawn out and stuff but um, yeah definitely check it out I'm just saying cool yeah. um, so we just got a, a co- I, yeah I saw it confirmation <laughs> nice um, um, that's nightmare fuel speaking of nightmare fuel completely unrelated. Uh, I saw a video today in Singapore. They're using those Boston Dynamic uh, robot dogs mm-hmm. to enforce social distancing. Of course they are. They're, they had a video of this friggin' robot dog. Oh, oh I saw you Walking through yeah. the park. Ah! And then it, it speaks to you. It's just got a pre-recorded message that reminds people to stay away from each other. But, like, I watch Black Mirror. Um, Big, Big Brother. It's even... No, because Big Brother is people... These are robots. This yeah, but, is, but this they, is like they, Skynet, but they're not self-aware. Man. It's like a Roomba can go around the entire room and vacuum, and it's still controlled. Yet, not yet. <laughs> they're not self-aware. You're insane. Yet, You're insane. So, uh, incredibly frightening. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Crazy world we live in. It is. So, today we're going to be listening to Hobo Johnson's 94 Corolla by Hobo Johnson. Are you listening to his actual 94 Corolla? Um, kind of, actually. Um, because this song, from what I understand, I've been doing some research and haven't been able to find another instance of this being said. But this and some of his first album was made in this car. Um, he eventually blew a head gasket on the car and then couldn't have it anymore. And he said, like, you know, he brought it down to the junkyard and they put it in a crusher. And he was like, my entire life just got put into that crusher Ugh. completely. He had, like, poems written out, like, scrawled onto the hood and everything like that. Oh, wow. Um, but basically, the, you can tell throughout the story of the album, he basically got kicked out of his uh, dad and stepmom's house. Um, he said he was, like, never a good kid. He was always rude to his teachers, rude to other people. He got arrested a few times for being drunk and DUIs and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so he got kicked out of his house, and pretty much all he had was his 94 Corolla, which he lived in and worked at a pizza place. And, like, that was his entire life. Ugh. Um so basically, he he got really big within the past year or two because uh, he went on NPR's Tiny Desk and um, oh, concerts, gosh. and then got super super big, and now he's he's been to every major city. But he was living in his '94 Corolla in Sacramento, California, and made this album that is nowhere to be found but SoundCloud and a few places on YouTube. But he pulled it off all the stores and stuff, and that's the only place you can hear it is is there. So oh, cool. Um, but yeah, from what I understand, he made it in his car. Um, you can't really tell he made it in his car, though. That's the beauty of of this. But that's what he did. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's funny because like, I, part of me wants to be able to tell, but I don't know what would make you hearing it think that it's in a car. Yeah, maybe um, the ding, ding, ding of the door. Right. I don't know. Um, so this album, um, and actually all of his albums, his music in general, he does a lot of spoken word kind of um, rapping. Okay. It's really weird. So when you listen to him like he's his singing isn't in time with anything it's just 
he says it was something that helps him kind of get the words out that he wants to get out. Um, so it it's different. Okay. And that's what's esoteric about it. So Well, you, um, you know me and music. I yeah. like different. Um, so he's like a lot of his newer stuff is a lot more mainstream and it's popular, but well, um, this is not. So uh, it actually was rated 1.6 out of 5 stars. So Ooh. I think this is perfect. Nice. Um, I loved it, though. I thought it was 5. So. <laughs> um, all right. So let's take a listen to the first track on Hobo Johnson's 94 Corolla called Hobo Johnson's 94 Corolla. Because it's just me and my Corolla with peanut butter and a box of fruit roll-ups. I'm not looking for trouble. Find me. The young boys become humbled again. Was a man, now he feels like a kid. Trading smiles for helping him, but it's fake. I can hear you. There's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> uh, and this is just the beginning. I think this is one of the most tame tracks on this until whole album. Well, right off the bat, I'm, I'm intrigued. Uh, I like the, the different tones. Mm. Not through it, the, the mood shifts, the sound changes. Yes. Um, nothing else he's ever put out is like this. Mm. not a thing like nothing and was I'm, I'm sorry did i is this his first album or the, technically but if it, i guess maybe it's more of an ep it's eight songs and it's 30 minutes i'd call it an album but i guess it's an ep um his first album is called the rise of hobo johnson and the one he just came out with is the fall of Robo, hobo johnson that was a short career yeah <laughs> um so this predates those yes okay yeah so from what i understand it was in his car so he's only 24 so i think he made this about like when he was my age so it makes me feel like how unsuccessful i am <laughs> when he's 24 making this crap in his car i know it's that well, we're listening to in a small podcast on the other side of the country why don't you get off my couch and get into your car and record something of substance <laughs> son <laughs> you piece of shit <laughs> uh so our next track is called uh hobo johnson prepares for his last Ooh. hmm so, uh, man, these titles get more insane as we keep going. Um, so, Hobo Johnson prepares for his last. But I just nobody other than myself. I can't do it. Wow. The computer thought it was good too. <laughs> uh, yeah, got a little time there. Uh, um, I I really I'm, I'm liking how it, it's all over the map. Yeah, there's like there's not even a one musical style. No, there's like four or five different things going on. Um, and as we progress more, you'll see more like the spoken word thing I was talking about um, mm-hmm. hasn't shown up yet, but you'll see more of it. Okay, um, it's really really interesting. It seems experimental, like he's trying to find his voice. Um, you know, yeah. how he wants to present his voice, I, I guess, is a better way to say Yeah, and he talks a lot about this album, I think the one after it, too, where um, they he put it out there and he wants people to like it, and uh, nobody liked it. Like, nobody would listen to it. I like it so far. I, well, that's the thing. Like, you and I might like it, but, like, the people that he put it out in Sacramento that probably would hear who about who he is, yep. nobody liked it. Um, so it, just because of that NPR contest, like, it happened to blow up. So our next track is, I gotta pull it up, called Hobo Johnson Drowns. And I think he mentioned something about drowning in the last song, so. (laughs) So, Hobo Johnson Drowns. Hobo Johnson Drowns. to go out on a limb here and say this is prog yeah i agree with you you know I, people hear progressive rock and they they think of yes and genesis and king crimson and that 70s sound but uh, the defining element of that genre is it's usually like their concept albums they're yep. telling a story or maybe you know with with prog there's a lot of reference to classical literature and mythology and stuff which is not here but right. this is definitely experimental at the at the least yeah yeah and um this i think the narration at the beginning and I, I said to you off mic like, i don't know if this is originally part of it or this is something he put in 
afterwards because if you look on youtube like the narration that's in the beginning is not there Hmm. um or anywhere else i've looked but i think it gives it an element of telling the story for the song it probably got put in there because everyone's like well what the hell is this yeah um and it helps you make sense of what this randomness is (laughs) definitely makes it a concept album it does um and, and i will say like I, I'm digging all the, the the different themes that pop up in each song, mm-hmm. but at least on first listen, it's it, it's impossible for me to follow any narrative here. Oh yeah, like what's going? I, I get lost. Yeah, I I didn't like it at first, and actually looking at the lyrics on Genius, it made a lot more sense. Um, so maybe we need to do that for the next few. <laughs> um, so well, our next track is Hobo Johnson loves a woman. Now I think this song. Um, there's a new song. We're going to listen to it actually at the end of all of this because I think it ties this story together a little well. Okay. Um, this song relates to another song called Peach Scone that he came out with after he recorded these and released these. He probably wrote it around the same time, but um, it, it hadn't come out yet. So they allude to each other a little bit. Um, so we'll listen to the narration. You'll kind of get the story. But um, yeah, Hobo Johnson loves a woman. Tell me what do you want from me? I've been out here for the last few years, and now I know where I'm going, and I'm still trying to own it. Tell me, what do you want to see? At what point do you think this shit is okay? That this shit is okay. So I like the the use of silence mm. in the songs. Like, it, it, the song completely stops. You almost think it's over, and... Yeah, he completely stops what he's doing, and I, like, I have, maybe I don't have to, but I have to tell you, like, this is the same song, by the way. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Um, if there's no narration at the beginning, then we can presume it's the... Yes, yeah, that's, that's the guideline, but, um, yeah, it's, it's probably, like, three or four songs that just get pushed together and, like, become one thing, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's, that's really cool, um. So you'll you'll hear probably the same themes. I don't know how close you're able to tell the story, but we'll listen to Peach Scone at the end because I think it ties into this. It's only mm-hmm. like another two minutes, so um, so we'll throw that in. Um, but this story, I think, starting with the next song, um, is where it starts to become like a story that's separate from the rest of this because a lot of this is like about him and how he's feeling. Um, so this this next part is like a cohesive story. The next song is called. Hobo Johnson met a thought, T H O T, a thought. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, starts with that, and then it goes through the next two tracks. That as you listen to the, the titles, you'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, this is where this is going. <laughs> okay. So, um, Hobo Johnson met a thought. Met a thought. Hobo Johnson met a thought. So there he was, standing there defeated. No peanut butter. No girl that he likes or loves or whatever. So he quits his job somewhat rashly and lands upon another where he meets a grown-ass woman, if you know what I mean. The two seem to hit it off, yada yada yada. But there's a constant on and off type thing, as he believes she might be down for some extracurricular. With a keen eye, he starts to understand. She don't like you. So a thought. A thought, yeah. Really thoughty and naughty. (laughs) Um, Getting hip with the young kids, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Uh. <laughs> um, a, a lot of the same things here though like you know the changing up and um, I think this had a good example of um, in the second verse um, like a lot of words put together almost spoken word kind of yeah. um, and then uh, that piano interlude showed up again yeah I think that shows up a couple times so um, yeah hmm well, we listened about Hobo Johnson meeting a thought. Now Hobo Johnson has himself a dirty thirty. A dirty thirty. Oh yeah. Am I gonna have to Google that? No, it'll it'll you'll you'll learn what it is in the song. Okay. But um, Hobo Johnson has himself a dirty thirty. All right. So let's do it. You know what time it is? Approximately one thirty in the motherfucking afternoon. And that can only mean one thing. He's about to take your thirty. Thirty. So Hobo Johnson's getting busy. Yeah. A um, little inconsistency here. This song's called 94 Corolla. Um, he said back of his Civic. Hmm. 
his Civic, not her Civic. Civic. The back of my Civic. Exactly. Hmm. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't ask questions. <laughs> um. So yeah, dirty thirty. That's doing it on your lunch break. Yeah. <laughs> and it seems like out of the other songs we've heard, this one's pretty straightforward. Yeah. He's having a naughty lunch. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Well, I think the next track will um, also make equal sense because um, this next one's called Hobo Johnson Goes to Jail. Oh. So, uh, and like I said, this is a bit of a continuation of the story. So, okay. Let's uh, watch Hobo Johnson Go to Jail. Avocado, avocado, jailhouse sells for awfully hollow. Hold me close as I just wallow in the thought of free tomorrows. If I die before I wake, everything will be okay. My dreams have took me far away from bricks of yellow, white decay to yellow beaches full of sand. I kind of feel like cell phones ruin the uh, shouting out to your area code. <laughs> um. Th- with all that and like talking about Twitter, it kind of like call back to sports mm-hmm. or like it, how it, the whole technology kind of changes exactly how um, expressing your feelings and communication works. Yeah. You know, um, well, like, duh, but um, I don't know. So I'm guessing if, if this is autobiographical, uh, he got busted doing his dirty 30 in the car. Yeah, I mean, again, I I don't know for sure. Um, I'm but... trying to connect the three. So he got arrested doing a dirty thirty with the thought, with the thought that he met. Yes. Yeah. So, so now we get a, the whole thing going on. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I love the title of this next song. Ooh, lay it um, on me. Hobo Johnson wants Ronda Ronda Rousey to be his dominatrix. Don't we all? <laughs> um. So we're going to we're going to take a listen to that. Oh, uh, right. it's a mouthful so I don't want to say it again, but we're going to listen to it. I lose 10 pounds every time I like a girl and I've lost 60 pounds in the last 2 years through the math. That's six different girls I try to get at who didn't really like me back, but it's whatever ho. I mean whatever though. She want to come and get it like Selena in a second if she want it in the back of a Well, yeah. There was a complex roller coaster of a song yes it was um round ronda rousey was not his actual dominatrix but but he wants <laughs> he wants her to be um my, my favorite line is give me an apple i'll take my leaf off <laughs> adam and eve bro or uh, yeah, kind of like a young paul blart that's a segue <laughs> that's a segue he has a nice play yeah. on words the references are nice i will say and he does mention his Corolla this time around. As oh, thank God, to, not the Civic. Not the Civic, <laughs> yeah. Um, so this next track is only 51 seconds. Um, this is actually the last track on the album. We're also going to listen to Peach Scone, which is like another two minutes. So we don't know much longer with this Hobo Johnson guy. Um, but this last track, it kind of wraps up everything. And um, got a few demos from the rise of Hobo Johnson that like get in- injected into there. Okay. Um, which is really cool. So, hmm. let's take a listen to Hobo Johnson and you. So, I guess that's where our protagonist's adventure stops for now. I hope we shared a few laughs, maybe a few tears. I hope we learned that sadomasochism is completely normal, and there isn't an ounce wrong with it. I hope we learned that even though times are tough, everything will be okay. So, that's the end of the album. Um, Sums it up. I, I like the, the summation from the narrators. Good, yeah. cool. Um. Gives a little sneak peek at what's coming next. Little demos. Um, so I'm going to play one more song. And it's Peach Scone. Um, so we're, we're pretty much done with this album, though. I th- we think we can do our little outro with Peach Scone. Um, but uh, this kind of relates back to um, Hobo Johnson Loves a Woman. I think it's the exact same story. He's in a pizza place, and he meets a woman, and he loves her. And mm-hmm. she's got a boyfriend and like all this other stuff. Um, but it's a completely different vibe. This is more like what he is now, but it's more of that spoken word I talked about in the beginning. Okay. Um, so that's where the, that comes into play. So um, let's take a listen to the Peach Scum. Excellent. We should go and get a freaking cup of coffee and all act friendly. And I won't pull any stunts, but I'm a little stop puller from birth. So I don't know what to tell you if I try to confess my love for scones. I just want to say something real quick. Please, you shouldn't listen. I love 
these scones. Just diversity between the selection of half here, the blueberry, the raspberry, strawberry, pumpkin, even, which is basically a freaking squash. And then I make a scone out of a freaking squash. Oh, wow, wow. I really enjoyed Hobo Johnson. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it um, because it was weird and I was like, oh, yeah, this is a Chris thing. Yeah, it was, <laughs> uh, it was difficult music. I, I would say that. It sounds to me... Now, like knowing that he's gone on to other stuff, and you said this album is is harder to come by these days. Too. Yeah, it's it's on YouTube and SoundCloud. That's it. So maybe he's looking for his voice when he made this. Cause... Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, if he made it in his '94 Corolla, I think that's definitely the thing. Yeah. Um, and you know, we we did the music part of this episode a couple of days ago, like I said earlier. But um, since we recorded that part, I've been looking a little more into it, and um, turns out the first album he did after this, he actually produced and recorded himself also um and they submitted a video onto npr's tiny desk i don't know if i said this earlier but they submitted the video and they became big literally um overnight mm. with that video because it was just in the backyard of their house or something yeah um of them doing this video so it's it's really a good story um and hopefully inspirational for people that you know want to be creative like that that they can actually get out and and I, there are people out there that will appreciate the things that you do, no matter how weird it might be, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, um, between this, somebody who, who produced something in, the, in, in their car, and uh, if, if our listeners listen to the interview with Homer Flynn when he talks about, um, you know, the, the same love that I, I have for music when it's that earnestness. Uh, if, you, if you got a voice inside of you, like, let it out, man. Don't keep that light under a bush, yo. Yeah, yo. <laughs> it's church show. Church show. So, um, what's on deck for next week? Next week, uh, we'll be listening to one of my favorite um, small time bands, The Handsome Family. Mm, not me. Their album, Singing Bones. Um, they're relatively unknown, though. If anybody has watched the first season of True Detective, um, the theme song from that is from this album so hmm. they got a little popularity with that um i will um be a hipster here and say that i was into them before that um, oh um, man i actually got into them a number of years ago um because they're involved in a project that jim white was doing but you know whatevs so we'll be listening to that and i might ask nick to come my son to come down because mm -hmm. he absolutely hates this album with the passion. <laughs> That's so, great. That's so, wonderful. Uh, it might be fun to make him listen to that with us. Uh, well, as always, um, check out our website, esotericofthepodcast.com, for all of our content, episodes, blog posts, albums from our episodes, live streams, and our new series, Famous Folks, which should be out by now. Um, uh, and, yeah. Cool bones? Cool bones. <laughs> what the hell is that? Cool bones. Okay. Singing sing cool bones. Cool uh, bones. Uh, well, as always, stay safe and uh, stay away from that COVID. We'll see you um, this Friday on Esoteric Podcast Famous Folk. Stay Esoteric.